Yeah, I started game developing fairly early. I was uh, I've played a lot of games like Commodore 64 and stuff. And when my dad bought us a Commodore 128, we started subscribing to this magazine that had like program lists in it. And I started just uh, entering them and kind of started playing around with programming from there. And then it, it took a while until I actually started going into like game design, mostly just doing like engine programming first. Well, very basic because I was very young, but still. Yeah, the biggest change came really early when I kind of got the freedom to do whatever I wanted. Like, if I wanted to make a game in a certain way, I could do that. Uh, then, uh, as the game got more popular, I started like getting money and fans following me on Twitter, which is really cool. Uh, but I think the freedom is still the, the most positive uh, change. I had this goal of where I wanted to take the game, and that was kind of the full release, which is kind of why we called it that. Uh, but there's so much we can add that we keep uh, finding out. Like one thing we really wanted to do, but for some reason it kind of slipped between the chairs, was the mod support. Because uh, lots of people are adding really cool stuff and we want to more embrace that more. And also, like we started working on the villagers and that didn't really finish in time, and so we're going to keep working on that. And we have lots of like, surrounding features for it that we want to add. And, I mean, we have lots of stuff that we could add, so we're going to keep working on this basically for as long as people are buying the game, I guess. Yeah, the, the reason I added the, the end game, or that I said we should add the end game, and then me and Jens did it, was uh, because I want to avoid the situation where, like, in uh, you're playing Sim City and you, you build your city and you build it for a long time and you don't really have a purpose, you just throw in tornadoes uh, or whatever. I think I'm very inspired by roguelikes that have a goal that you can reach and it's very difficult so you never really reach the goal but it doesn't really matter because losing is fun. Uh, so for me the kind of ideal way to play Minecraft is to play it in hardcore mode and never really beat the game. Uh, the ending text was written by Julian Go, I think his name is pronounced. Go. Uh, uh, I met him a couple of times before because he hangs around like indie game developers in Germany. It's a, it's a really weird piece on like, uh, I don't know, metaphysical stuff or whatever. And I really like stuff like that. I, I couldn't write it as well as he did, but it, it really fit the, the, the mood of just trying to have some kind of bizarre ending that didn't have to reflect what the player did. Because it didn't want to undermine the, what the player did. The game is still about what the game player did. But then have a comment on playing a game at all it was kind of interesting to have there. And the fact that it's 9 minutes and 4 to 5 seconds just make it better. We haven't really thought about which features we're going to add uh, after this because we're so focused on just doing this like full or final or yeah, the game release kind of. Um, one thing we've been talking about is the, the villagers because we, we hired a guy who's really good at like AI programming. So I know Jacob wants him for scrolls but we also want him for Minecraft. So. Yeah, uh, Scrolls is a game that me and Jacob thought of a long time ago and it's kind of changed form a few times, but it's still kind of the same idea. And when we started Mine, uh, Mojang, we did it because we wanted to just make games, both of us. Uh, so I'm, I've been working on uh, Minecraft and he's working on Scrolls, but we were both kind of involved in each other's games. The biggest, uh, the thing I'm the most proud of in Minecraft is the, the way the community is so engaged in, in the game. Like we have. Uh, like the, the biggest gaming related subreddit, which is really awesome. Uh, and like uh, lots of people on Twitter are talking to me about it. I get lots of email and people are really like uh, engaged in what we're doing. And I think it's really cool. Yeah, I, I think the, the best advice I can give everyone is don't listen to advice. But if you are going to listen to advice, then making sure you actually do something is a good advice. If you just sit around planning something and not doing it, you're not actually going to get anywhere. Yeah.